Hello and welcome to the second progress report presentation of Southern Optimization LLC for Wesley Williams Petty 4998 Senior Project Class. Today you will hear the progress made by me, Mylon Perrin, our Senior Project Team Lead, Michael Formby, our Business and Production Coordinator, Devin Samaha, our Drilling Project Manager, and Devin Dimitrios, our Geology Lead. Our decision topics of today will be geology, drilling costs, production costs, business decision matrix, and our plan forward. Some key messages to note. Two prospects are currently being worked. Our group is on track to complete all initial goals outlined for our project. Desired outcome is to demonstrate the progress of constructing a business plan that acquires and manages mineral prospects. This is our decision analysis tree. Um, this is the the basis of what our business is going to be ran through. Um, it starts off with just the state records. Can we obtain them? Um, what kind of information can we get? Can we get the well logs so that we can correlate? Um, and from there, it'll base off. And then ultimately, we want to get to the point where do we want to drill the well ourselves or do we want to sell the well for profit? So here's our production equipment cost. Um, this is just a rough estimate, but I was working with Southwestern Energy, and we were we were able to obtain some of these values. Um, this does change the, for example, the tanks and the separator. They can actually be split among wells, but every well will be different based on the area and what uh, equipment is already there on site. This is our secondary recovery method cost analysis. Uh, varies by location. Um, and it also varies on how the reservoir is acting. Uh, the compressor can actually be used on multiple wells. So if you have, you know, two or three wells already drilled, uh, the compressor may be your best route. Um, uh, you also can do the plungers, and the plunger is probably your cheapest install, and there's almost no monthly cost um, to the company. My contribution for the past few weeks was to estimate the drilling and completion costs. The next two slides will show snapshots from the Excel document I created to analyze the various costs associated with drilling and completing a new well. I used historical data from different drilling companies to choose an average trip speed to help account for the costs typically forgotten about. This will include tripping in the hole with the drilling BHA, out of the hole to run casing, tripping in with completion equipment, etc. I included the time it takes to actually rig up and pick up the equipment on the rig. I used a typical average rate of penetration to help account for the charges acquired while drilling ahead. I found that this was a substantial cost of the project and is an area that engineering can help make more efficient. I spoke with multiple service companies to get accurate estimates for miscellaneous equipment required to drill and complete a well. The total cost estimate for drilling and completing a well onshore Louisiana is about $9 million. In order to account for various non-productive time or unforeseen miscellaneous charges, I multiplied this value by two. I believe this is a safe estimate that we can use to help find a minimum sized reservoir while prospecting in order to establish a profitable business model. Basic information about a potential prospect can be found in the Black Books and Simers. It gives us the background information on the units for a reservoir. A unit is usually defined as the maximum area which may be efficiently and economically drained by one well. Unitization is a process of combining small contiguous tracts of land into a unit large enough to qualify for a drilling or production unit. There are two types of units, geologic and geographic. Geologic gives us an idea of the regional subsurface geology. Geographical units give us a better understanding of the local topography, for example, marshes, bayous, and even changes in elevation. This is an example of a field order. These can also be found in the black books on Sonris. Exploration companies are required to present all geologic and subsurface data to the Office of Conservation. The commissioner and his staff evaluate the proposed data to ensure fair practice. It defines the reservoir of interest to the state and outlines the company's plan to drill. We can use these to gather historical data of the wells near our prospect. Survey plats can also be obtained in the black books on Sonris. 
It shows us a basic outline of the proposed reservoir and the land that sits on top of it. In addition, it gives us the division of land, the owners of each piece of property, and the total acreage of land. After gathering data from SONRIS including unit information from black books and well log data, we will construct a subsurface geologic structure map. These maps will map the zones of interest in a well log that are determined by gamma ray and resistivity logs. From these readings we will determine where shales, sands, oils, and gases are located. Finally, we can put all of this data together to create an illustration of what we believe the subsurface geology might look like. Here are two examples of zones of interest in well logs from our current prospect. If you look at the lower left hand corner in the larger spheroid you will see a low gamma ray reading which indicates a sand layer. The smaller spheroid just to the right of that sand zone indicates what is known as a resistivity marker. This spike in resistivity shows hydrocarbon activity which, when located in sandstone formations, tends to indicate oil and gas. On the well log to the right, we can see another example of low gamma ray readings indicating that the zone is possibly sandy. However, if we look at the resistivity reading, we can see that it is relatively low. This typically indicates that the formation is filled with water. Using this analysis, we can review prospects and determine where to drill when to drill, or not to drill at all. Moving forward, what can we expect our operation to look like? I was able to schedule a field trip to a production site of a company near our area of interest. The above photos show what our site may look like and what production equipment we may need. Once we decide on an area we believe to be capable of producing, we will move forward to analyze what equipment will be required to develop that location, exactly how much money will be required, if the location is accessible, and if we want to drill the prospect or hand it off to another company. That concludes our presentation for today. I hope you have enjoyed it and we look forward to presenting our next progress report.